So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is how we establish KSP from a molar solubility. Now remember, molar solubility and KSP has been outlined in a video that I have posted to the YouTube channel, so make sure you take a look at that so that you understand the theory behind uh, our calculations before you actually delve into the calculations. So this first problem is trying to establish the KSP, that is the solubility product constant, if we understand the molar solubility. Now what you're going to notice with this particular equilibrium equation is that we have a solid here. We have a solid and two aqueous components. Now remember, with that solid, its concentration is relatively constant or we see that it's factored into our equilibrium constant. So we don't actually have to worry about it when we put together our equilibrium expression. So when we put together our equilibrium expression, we're really only taking a look at the products. And just like any other equilibrium expression, it is going to be the concentration of the products raised to the appropriate exponent, represented by the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. But keep in mind that we do not have anything in the denominator because there is not going to be anything on the reactant side that we're going to include. For this, we're also informed that the molar solubility of silver chloride is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. So if we understand the relationship between the two silver ions and the carbonate ion in conjunction with our silver carbonate, we understand that for every mole of the silver carbonate that dissociates, we're going to get two moles of silver ions and one mole of carbonate which means if we know the maximum solubility or the molar solubility in this particular solution at this particular temperature, then we understand what relationship that's going to have to the two ions. So what that means for us is that as we're writing this in, we are going to have twice the molar solubility for the silver ions because for every mole of the silver carbonate there's going to be two moles of silver ions produced and we still have to square this according to the KSP expression and that the concentration at saturation of the carbonate ion is going to be equal to the molar solubility of the silver carbonate because of that one to one ratio. So when you're going through this calculation, you're going to have to, for silver, multiply the 2 times the 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4, and then square the entire thing in the brackets before multiplying it by 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4 of the carbonate ion. And when we do that, what we find is we get a value of 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 12. Now this value tells us that we have an extremely low KSP. And that's not surprising given that most silver ions have relatively low solubilities and, and that most carbonate compounds also have relatively low solubilities. So we would see that this lies extremely far to the left, so to speak, or in order to reach the point of saturation, it requires a very low concentration of both silver and carbonate ions in that particular solution. So if we take a look at another way to solve these types of problems, we are going to, as we do with most other things, start with the equilibrium equation. Now the reason that I'm starting with this equilibrium equation is because I'm going to, instead of working through and rationalizing what the individual concentrations are, I am going to represent the concentrations at the point of saturation for both product ions by using some factor x. Now we know what the molar solubility is, so in fact we know what x is, but we will utilize that later as we fill it in. So we understand that our concentration at equilibrium is going to be 2x for the silver ion and only 1x for the carbonate ion. Again, because of that 2 to 1 ratio that these two things dissociate in. Our KSP expression is unchanged. The concentration of the silver ion raised to the exponent 2, representing the 2 coefficient from the balanced chemical equation, multiplied by the concentration of the carbonate ion. Now keeping in mind that we're going to represent x for our molar solubility, we can then solve and start to expand in this fashion. Now remember when we square something outside the bracket, we have to square everything inside the brackets. So it's going to be 4x squared multiplied by x, resulting in a total value of 4x cubed. Now if we understand the value of molar solubility, that is molar solubility is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4, then we can sub that in. So it's going to be 4 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4, all cubed. If we perform this calculation, we're going to find that we get the exact same answer. 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 12. 
Now, regardless of which way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. It's just up to you as to which way you prefer or which way you understand better. But hopefully after watching this, you have an understanding of how to establish KSP from molar solubility.